You know what she did? She shut up, but she didn't repent. She went and sat down. And that's the problem we have, is we want God to do something. Listen to me, addict. Listen to me, child of God. You've been sitting on the pew and you want God to do something for you. But when God speaks to you, He's going to speak to you through the man of God in your life. But when He gives you a word from the Lord, you don't want to receive it right then. You want to try everything else first. I was truth anyhow. We won't try everything else to fix us before we let God. Because we can't see God and it ultimately tells God we really don't believe in God. Right? Because if we really did believe in God, when we got the word from God, we would act upon that word and it would save us from all kinds of hell. Because the word of the Lord is true. It's been tried and it's been found true. Now you could come to me and ask me for direction. And if I give you direction and it's out of that book, guess what? It's going to work. But if you come to me and you ask me for something to help you along the way and it's not in that book, I don't care if you go to A-A-N-A-W-W-F, whatever. You're not going to get the the, the goods to overcome the things in your life only through the power and the hope that you have in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So we navigate through life trying to battle spiritual things in our flesh. And if you only pray on Wednesdays and Sunday mornings and Sunday nights, you just got your tail whooped. You're not overcoming anything. You're not going to make it through nothing. Some of you, your home life's terrible. You, You know why your husband won't come to church? Because the way you act outside of the church. Oh God, this ain't in my notes, but it's free. And the reason why some of your wives won't come in, because outside of this building, you're not a man of God. Because we operate in the flesh. We walk in the flesh when we were never called to do that. And that's why whenever something happens to us, we we have that need, that hopelessness. That's a spirit of hopelessness that falls upon people. And people that have hope can turn to God. And people that don't have hope turn to everything else but God. God. I'm fixing to get into something here in a minute. When everything falls apart, you've got two decisions. Listen, pastor looked at me and he said, some people aren't here. I said, they're scared. Because what I'm bringing is truth, baby. And you got and people knew, they know that when they got here, they're going to have to make a decision. And they know that they're going to choose a pill over God. They knew they were going to choose. Listen, there's church folks sitting on the pew tonight. Some of you are addicted to things that you never... My God, some of you are so addicted to to gossip and backbiting. You're so addicted to social media. Yeah, I'm talking about church folks. That's why folks don't want to come to church. Because the church is addicted to things that are fleshly and not of God. You get on social media and you tell everybody your drama. You ain't said nothing about the goodness of God and how God set you free. And we wonder why people aren't getting the Holy Ghost and being baptized in Jesus name I'm trying to tell you because there's too much flesh in the church I'm here to declare it tonight that we're going to start walking in the spirit and we're going to oh you know Paul we, we a lot of times we say Paul said I die daily you know there was two things that Paul was dying to daily himself Listen now, listen to this. Sin and his flesh. Yeah. Sin and his flesh. (laughs) I'm going to help somebody right now. So you go on a 21 day fast, right? You go on a 21 day fast, you're, you're, you're sacrificing, you're killing your flesh. I know people that don't even live for God. And, and people say, I'm on, you know, I've heard people, I'm going to fast and God's going to deliver me from these things that I've got going on in my life. Nicotine, alcohol, pornography, this, that, this. And that. I'm going to fast because the Bible says some things only come through prayer and fasting. So people will fast. People, I know, I know men of God, I know a prophet of God, that he would fast 21 days straight, 30 days straight. <laughs> And he, he came 
this man of God I'm talking about, he came to Brother Barnes one time and he, Brother Barnes knew he was on that fast and he said, uh, you need to stop fasting. He said, why is that? He said, because it ain't working for you. He said, because you do whatever you want to do all them other days of the year, you live however you want to live. He said, I ain't fasting today, and I'm, I'm dying out more to my flesh than you ever thought about dying out to, because you got in your mind after these 30 days, come on now somebody, if I can just be clean for 30 days. Listen, I know, I know so many people, and I know church folks too, that I'm just going to pray for 30 days, because after that 30 days, then I'm, gonna, I'm just going to be a prayer warrior from then on out. Listen to me, honey, on day 31, the phone is going to ring during that prayer time and you go answer. If we were worried about hearing from God as we are, our phone, our text messages and our messenger on Facebook, if we would be concerned enough of when God calls it, listen, we'll grab our phone while, during our prayer time to check our Facebook statuses and we're talking about we're not addicted and we love God more than we love ourselves. Come on, somebody in this place. And we wonder why God's not pouring out His Spirit and we're not seeing the supernatural. I'm here to tell you tonight through the authority that's in the Holy Ghost, when we die out to us, God God can reign. When we die out to our flesh, God will supersede our flesh every time. But we got to die out to it. And you know what the problem is? The reason why we can't die out to our flesh, and, and, and there's people that sit on the pews, you want to know why we can't die out to it? I'll tell you why. Because you don't have the Spirit. The only thing that will make you kill your flesh is the Spirit. And if you give in to your flesh time and time and time and time again, I question the spirit that's in your life. Because you're going to be led and guided by something. Oh, it gets real quiet when you tap in that Holy Ghost vein, don't it? Huh? And see, when we do that, we make these bad decisions over and over and over and over and over again. We become defeated. And that's where the shame kicks in. That's where the shame kicks in. That's when the hopelessness kicks in. Because we magnify our faults and our failures greater than God's grace. And our faults and our failures get bigger than God. And so then we think, what's the use? God's not for me, He's against me. In all actuality... When God comes back, He's coming back after a people that endured some things. They that endureth to the end. You mean I'm going to have to go through something? Yeah. Everything's going to come up against you because God's going to really check your spirit to see if you choose Him no matter what goes on in life. So yeah, yeah, you're going to fail. Yeah, yeah, young folks are going to fornicate. Oh God, I just said that in church. The biggest problem this world has is sex and the church don't want to talk about it. It's an addiction, it's pornography. That's why they got men sitting on the pew here when you go home. If you don't repent tonight, you're going to go to the computer and pull up your favorite site and it ain't going to be talking about Jesus. That's all, that's all right then, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. Because people tell me I'm an addict. I am too. I'm addicted to God. If you would strive after God, if you would pursue after the presence of God as you do the very thing that you think you can't listen, honey, you can't live without God. That's why you're miserable. Jesus came to give me life and me life more abundant. So if you're not living life and having it in abundance, then you're not living. So the very thing that's got control of you is the very thing that's killing you either way you go. You know, when God got a con control of me, you know the first thing he started doing to me? Killing me. Yeah, 
and it didn't feel good. He still whoops me. Throughout the week, when I go before I go preach somewhere, he lets me feel almost every spirit that's going to be in that service. So I'll know what I'm getting involved in. And it doesn't feel good sometimes. I felt Jezebel before I got here. I felt hopelessness before I got here. I felt sexual immorality when I got here. Not just in the church. I'm not talking about in the church. I'm talking about in this city. Oh, God. You ain't got to believe me. That's all right. I don't live for you. I live for him. So I know what I'm dealing with when I'm walking around. Boy, some of y'all are looking at me like this cat's crazy. So I started dying. God started killing me. Just like, listen, Satan's going to kill you, right? And then you got a decision how you're going to die. Are you going to mortify your flesh so your spirit can live? Or are you going to let Satan mortify your flesh and your spirit so you can be damned and go to hell? You've got a decision to make. Tonight we've got a decision to make. And I'm telling you something. Here, just in a few minutes, God's going to just bring in something in this room that's just going to be like, wow. And there's going to be decisions to be made. So, how can we live an overcoming life and have this hope that I'm talking about in the book of Romans chapter 8? I told you, I'm not here to preach tonight. I'm here, to, the Holy Ghost wants to help somebody. How do I have this hope? How do I have this hope? You know you can't overcome anything without the Holy Ghost. You can't do anything without the Holy Ghost. You can't overcome nicotine. You can't overcome alcohol. You can't overcome any kind of drug. You can't overcome gossip, backbiting. You can't overcome a bad relationship in your home. You can't overcome anything in the flesh without the Spirit of God. And that's the truth. That's the truth. That's the truth. Some of you are still stuck in Sunday school. You read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John 3.16 is not salvation. It's a story about who Jesus is. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John is about the gospels of the life of Jesus Christ. John 3.16 does not save you. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John does not save you. There's nothing in those scriptures that will ever save you or teach you how to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You know in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there wasn't even a church yet. Church wasn't even started yet. Didn't even start yet. And then you got the book of Acts. See, most folks want to walk around and live in the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John relationship with God. And then they have no power, no authority. Because my Bible says in the book of Acts, when I receive the Holy Ghost, He's going to give me something that's called power. So people are struggling with addictions because you get baptized in three people's names or three people's titles and you don't even know the name. I'm here to tell you right now, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there's no salvation in those books. So people that are living in the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, uh, that's your gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection, it's not in there. It talks about the resurrection, but it doesn't talk about how to be saved. The church is not even involved in the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There's not a church established in Matthew, Mark, Mark, Luke, and John. But when you turn to the book of Acts, that's why people are struggling with addictions. And that's why people are struggling sitting on churches all across this city right now. They have no power. They have no dominion. They have no authority. And the devil's whooping them. And they're struggling with addictions. That's why they can go to church and their life doesn't change. They don't change their lifestyle. Nothing inside of them can make them change. They don't have any power. There's no God in them. All they're doing is going through the motions and they're living off of a Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I believe, and that's all that matters. I confess Jesus as my Savior. Yeah, and the devil believes that there's one God and he fears and trembles. I'm here to tell somebody today, if you want deliverance, you want peace in your mind and joy in your heart, you need the Holy Ghost tonight and it will set you free. But not only that, it will make you free. Oh, yeah. 
You mean to tell me that I can't just come up and confess? Yeah, you can come up and confess all you want, but you ain't got any power. You just tried to save yourself. Baby, you can't save yourself. That's why folks go to church and they live the same life. And that's why even apostolic people, they come to the house of God, they receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but they go right back to that same old lifestyle. And they stay in Sunday school. They read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But the church starts in the book of Acts. There wasn't a church till the book of Acts. There was not a church till the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2. That's when the church started. That's when the church started. You don't believe me? Open your book up and show me. Show me in the Bible where, where, where you got power in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Show me where anybody received the baptism of the Holy Ghost in those books. And I'll shut up right now. But you ain't going to find it. I'm here to tell you the reason why people don't have deliverance and power is because they haven't had a book of Acts experience by receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There's some people right now mad, but they ain't mad at me. They're mad at Jesus. You mean to tell me if I don't have the Holy Ghost? Uh, yeah. I mean to tell you, without His Spirit, you're none of His. Without His name, you're none of His. You can't overcome anything without the Holy Ghost. You cannot overcome anything without the Father. You can't overcome anything without the Son. You can't overcome anything without the Holy Ghost. When are we going to see the Father? How long have I been with you? And you know me not. If you have seen me, you have seen my Father. Because I and my Father are one. And you know what? I'm going to send the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, I'm going to send the Holy Ghost in my name. So you mean the name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus and the name of the Father is Jesus and the name of the Son is Jesus? That's exactly what I'm trying to tell you. And when you get that revelation of who He is, that will let you know who you are and then that will give you something to overcome any trial, any tribulation, anything that comes into your life. Oh, God. The devil hates us. So he gives us all... I mean, there's people sitting in pews that have never experienced the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And that's why they're addicted to things. Not of God. Not of God. And then there's people of God that receive the Holy Ghost. And they let shame and hopelessness and life situations. You know what? You're going to make mistakes. If I would have quit God the first time I messed up after I received the Holy Ghost, I wouldn't have made it 24 hours. I grew into this. I'm still growing. I like it too. You folks know how to eat and cook. I'm still growing. I'm still growing. But the problem is, is that I'm getting back into this and then when God's fixing to do something, I'm going to go home, I'm going to go to bed and sleep good tonight because this week's been driving me nuts about this service. <laughs> it's the truth. People don't like old time preaching like this. They want the preacher to stand up there and read from a book and make them feel good and send them home after about 30 minutes and then they can go home and drink cuss and whoop each other and all that other good stuff. But boy, they go to church on Sundays and they're delivered and set free. From what? From what? The problem is, church, is we kill each other. We kill each other. So if you're, your worst, you're your worst enemy. You are. You beat yourself up more than God ever thought about beating you up. How many dads are here? You whooped your child and then you walked out and you cried. I do it. I don't mess with my boys anymore. They're bigger than me. They can whoop me. <laughs> you think God likes whooping you? No, He has to whoop you. But that whooping ain't for you to quit or for you to give up. That whooping's to make you more like Him and less like you. But the problem is, is when we get a whooping... We wear it real good. People are like, Brother Burke, you're, you you got the gift of discerning the Spirit. I'm like, no, I don't. You look like you've been sucking lemons for about three weeks. That ain't no gift. You wear it good. 
You beat yourself up. And then you know what happens? We wear that and we people sit on it. And guess what that does? All you carnal folks that sit on the pews, you start talking about, oh, I knew that, I knew that. I knew she'd back out there smoking that dope. I knew, I knew. Oh, we laugh, but it's true. I thought I'd seen her car parked down there. It wasn't her car. That's your imagination. You're full of the devil and you need to repent. You ain't prayed for him none. But you show, oh God, I'm in something now. And then they go back and they turn back to the addiction because they feel like the addiction loves them more than the church of God loves them. Oh God, I'm in something right now. I'm telling the truth right now that we got to quit killing these babies and cry. We need to quit aborting these people and we need to start loving them and raising them and discipling them and making them the kingdom of God's choice. Why would an addict want to come in here? Some of you are sitting on the pews. You've dealt with addictions. There's church folks that aren't here tonight. You can delete this off this recording if you like. There's some folks that in the church pay the tithes, give the offering, vote when you have a vote, and they're addicted to pills right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Pastor ain't told me nothing. The Holy Ghost just did. Yeah. And the reason why we didn't have a breakthrough, and I'm preaching right now, I shouldn't even be preaching. The reason why this thing didn't break loose, because you're scared of them. Y'all look tighter than some of these folks, tighter than, than, than Brother Duell's wallet. <laughs> we get around folks that need God, and we... Come on. That's the truth. Come on. I laughed up there. Because I was that cat that came in with the baggy pants and the bandana and the earring and the gold chain and the polo and the water money from selling dope and walked into one of the Pentecostal churches about six miles from here. And I laughed. And then folks oh God. I heard about how crazy they were and how vibrant. And they're like, scared to death. I, was more, I think they were more scared of me than I was them. Amen. We left that service. I told Jen, I said, I ain't going back there. Not ever. Not ever. Be careful what you say. <laughs> but the second time I went there, there was actually some people there at that service that had the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and there's some, you know what, what makes God angry? Is that there's people here tonight that need God that needed God when this service started. And you sat there. You sat there. It's alright. It has to be because I don't have to be invited back. I don't go to church here. There's some people here that need God, but let me tell you this, honey. If it was your baby, your aunt, your uncle, your brother, or your sister, you'd been weeping out in the aisles, shouting, jumping up and down, laying hands on them. But since it ain't yours, since they ain't kin to you, then they really don't matter. Well, you tell that to God on Judgment Day that they came to your house, the house of God, and you didn't inhabit, you didn't bring any praises, you didn't worship God, you didn't give your all. Because it wouldn't benefit you and yours. Yeah. Yeah. Let your child come back that's a backslider and run up here to the altar. You ain't going to be able to sit there. Let it be your cousin that's in the house of God that's addicted to dope. You ain't. Yeah, I want the musicians to come up. God's given us a second chance. God's given us a second chance. So the way that you overcome, just to, the way that you overcome and the way that you're delivered and the way that you're set free is by the Holy Ghost. What do I do to get this Holy Ghost? You repent of your sins. You ask God to forgive you of your sins. You're baptized in His name, Jesus' name, for the remission of those sins, and God fills you with the Holy Ghost. It's that simple. It's that simple. And then, then, listen, before God, when you messed up, 
You were depressed. You were beat down. You were lonely. Nothing could help you. But even with God, things are going to come in your life and you're going to mess up. But you listen to the wrong voice. See, you're not serving the enemy no more. So now you can talk to God. There's a power within you then where you can say, Lord, I am so sorry. Please forgive me. I choose you over that mess right now. And you know what? You, you can just walk away from it and you're forgiven. You're forgiven. You're forgiven. And before long, before long, that power that's within you, you won't struggle with that anymore. But guess what? There's going to be another struggle. And then there's going to be another struggle. But you're, you're able to overcome every one of those struggles through the power that's in the Holy Ghost. It's the only thing that will set you free and make you free. You have to receive the Holy Ghost tonight. You have to receive the Holy Ghost tonight. When I pastored, church would start and people would stand there like wooden Indians and they just go through the motions of having church. I would stop the music. Where's Callie? I would stop the music. And what would I? I was the pastor. And I, I did this several times. I would stop. I'd get up and I'd stop the music. I'd say, get every one of you dried up carcasses out of God's sanctuary right now. <laughs> I would. And I said, when you come back in, you enter His courts with thanksgiving and you enter... Come on. I like how we casually walk into God's house. I wish God's glory would grab a hold of somebody right now and plant you right on your face so you can see how awesome and how it is. You, you don't deserve to be here, baby. It's by the grace and the mercy of God that you're able to sit in this place tonight. And you know what would happen? You know what would happen when we do that? We let God be God. And people got the Holy Ghost. People got set free. And there's people tonight that are battling depression in this place. There's people tonight that are battling oppression. Some of you are battling addictions. Some of you have got shame in your life. Everything's falling apart. And you know what? I don't have any other answer for you but to pursue God's presence. Yeah. And God loves you enough tonight that I don't, man, I want something. We're going to beat the walls out of this place. Yeah. Matter of fact, you got about 20 seconds to run up. If you really want God, now you got about 17 seconds to run up here and get everything you need God to give you tonight. Now